Well, hello and welcome to our online service here with Chester Road Baptist Church. And guess what? We're in. We've spent the whole of today nesting, working out how to make things uh, work and how to make it sound beautiful. The place is looking amazing and these guys are now sounding amazing too. So we're going to be engaging in our worship in spirit and in truth. In just two Sundays, we get to reopen. Sunday, 25th of July. I know you've got the date in your diary already. I tell you, I cannot tell you how excited I am. I cannot wait for all these seats to be full so as we gather together to worship. If this is your first time connecting with us, we're really chuffed you're able to join with us for our online service. Keep that date the 25th free. If you're part of our regular church community and you've been journeying with us for goodness knows how many years, we are so pleased you're with us here too. And if you're part of another church and you found yourself journeying with us during these last few months of lockdown, we bless you wherever you are and trust that you are able to be a blessing to your home church. We're going to be worshipping. The words, well, they're going to be on the screen and I hope you're able to join in with us. The best thing to do is to crank the volume up loud at home and just enter in. Throw yourself into worship. The psalmist says this in Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. That's what we're going to do. Praise God in his sanctuary. Well, we're in this particular sanctuary, and that's what we're going to do too. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. What are you praising God for today? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Ian, don't hold back. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord indeed. Let's do that right now.
Today is taken from Nehemiah chapter 9, reading from verse 38 to chapter 10, verse 2. In view of all of this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are affixing their seals to it. Those who sealed it were Nehemiah the governor, the son of Achalia, Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah. The rest of the people, priests, Levites, gatekeepers, musicians, temple servants, and all who separated themselves from the neighboring peoples for the sake of the law of God, together with their wives and all their sons and daughters, who are able to understand. All these now join their fellow Israelites, the nobles, and bind themselves with a, cur with a curse and an oath to follow the law of God, given through Moses, the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our God. We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the peoples around us or take their daughters for our sons. When the neighboring peoples bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Every seventh year, we will forego work in the land and will cancel all debts. We assume the responsibility for carrying out the commands to give the third of a shekel each year for the service of the house of our God. For the bread set out on the table, for the regular gram offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbath, at the new moon face and at the appointed festivals, for the holy offerings, 
for sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the duties of the house of our God. Let's go. 
pray together. Lord, we do indeed thank you that we can boldly approach your throne. Thank you for the open invitation that you give to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are creator who see us at our best and yet also see it at our worst. You invite us. Thank you. Thank you. We come, Lord, in awe. We come in humility. We come with gratitude. Say thank you, Lord, for inviting us into your presence. We would come as your servants. And yet, Lord, you invite us as friends, even as family. Amazing, Lord God. Thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are then, working out our space, how to use it as we get into this new sanctuary and the refurbished way. We're so grateful for the opportunity just to have this time to practice, to engage, and we're a work in progress, aren't we all, as we take the next few days and weeks to keep improving and finding ways to come forward. Now, Albert Einstein, you know that genius of a scientist, he's famously quoted as saying, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, and yet expecting a different result each time. Now, okay, so probably Albert Einstein didn't actually say that, but don't let truth get in the way of a good quote. We all know churches that have done the same thing year in, year out. It's what they always do. And above the front door, they have the big sign that says, nothing changes here. And then they're surprised when actually they find themselves shrinking in numbers, dwindling down, and they wonder what happened. Some respond with despondency, others with judgment, because it must be all to do with the people out there not responding or uh, receiving correctly. The reality is they haven't adjusted. And the thing is that we worship the risen Christ. And that means that the spirit of Christ is here today, present. God is present. He is not just the God of the past or even of the God of the future. He is the God of the here and now, the present. And problems come when we ourselves are not as actively present in the moment as much as God is. It's almost as if for some places, they've so focused on the past that they have forgotten to engage with Christ in the present. The fantastic thing is that here at Chester Road Baptist, we have been on a journey and we continue to be. We've been on it for years, finding new ways, challenging ourselves to go deeper, to find ways to engage with the risen present Christ, giving ourselves permission to try some things different, giving ourselves encouragement to go further with the present Christ. We're on a series looking at Nehemiah, and we got to a point where we were realizing a few weeks ago that the people of Jerusalem were actively hearing the scriptures. Remember, they were in the services for six hours or more. They were listening to the scriptures. And as a result of their listening, whilst much of what they heard profoundly encouraged them and massaged them, with some of the scriptures they heard, it sliced through, it cut them to pieces. And it's almost as if it brought them up short. And what could they do? Well, last week we discovered that having heard the scriptures, all they could do was fess up to confess that God is big and glorious and good, and at the same time to fess up that maybe they aren't all that God had called them to be. And we left them last week receiving God's grace, God's abundant forgiveness, acceptance, the grace that God has for you too, abundant acceptance. So what next? We got to chapter 10. We're almost there in this great book. 
And what do they do? They respond by living differently. They don't continue doing what they've always done and expecting a different result. Instead, they recognize that something has to change. They've got to live and be different. Imagine that you heard the scriptures and it cut through to you and you realized that we were called to live generously, inclusively with one another. Then imagine that you are confessing that sometimes you don't always live up to that and you were responding to God. But then in the next breath, you go out and do exactly the same thing as if somehow all that you've heard and all that you fessed up doesn't really matter. How would that look? How would you feel? You know that's not the way to live. A sign of true repentance is that when we are cut up by the Holy Spirit and we feel that he's done surgery on us to identify the things that need to change, that we are so full of grief and remorse in confession that we want nothing whatsoever to do with that old way again. We desperately, desperately want to live differently. So it's all about living it. Yes, hearing it. Yes, confessing when we don't quite live up to it. But then going on to change, to live it, to put it into practice. And that's exactly what the people of Jerusalem then went on to do. They went on to walk the talk, to put it into practice. Do you know, when people encountered Jesus, the thing they often said most was that he had real authority. They didn't mean that he spoke with a particularly deep and authoritative voice that made him sound very posh and important. They didn't mean either that the God, the Son, had a particular privileged position and therefore had a higher level. And well, of course, we have to bow to him. What they meant was, when they said he had real authority, that they saw that he walked the talk. He actually did what he said. So when he talked about turning the other cheek, that's exactly what he did. When they heard him uh, going out of his way to include people, they saw that that's what he did too. He walked the talk. And that's exactly what you and I are called to do. So when you read the scriptures and you read something that, you, that grabs your attention and you begin to realize that the Spirit is nudging you, that actually this is something for you personally, then you put it into practice. You walk the talk. So chapter 9, verse 38, the people made a pledge, a commitment, a firm promise. The uh, Hebrew word is karat. They literally meant to cut a commitment to God. Now they do everything to call it a covenant without actually saying it is a covenant. And the reason why is that a covenant was made only by God, whereas the people would be making a commitment to each other. My in-laws, Sal's parents, are in the process of moving to the promised land here. They are moving from the black country to North Birmingham, just down the road from us. They were at the end of our garden, now they're going to be end of our road. Stalkers or what? And they're watching as well. As they are seeking to move, they are in a chain of people. And the whole point is that they move when everybody else moves. So it doesn't matter whether there's one, two, three, four, five people or more in the chain, everybody has to move at the same time. Everybody's equals. No one person can say, well, actually, you lot don't count. We're just going to move on the day that I want to move, and you're all just going to have to fall into line. They're all equals. So they have to make a commitment to each other to all move at the same time on the same day. Unfortunately, that meant that last week when they should have been moving, uh, somebody down the chain uh, got distracted and so it didn't happen. So everybody had to wait. But when it comes to making a covenant, a covenant was only made by God. God alone. It's almost like as if God was in the chain for moving. Actually, only he would be able to make that transaction. Nobody else can. It wasn't a commitment made between equals. It was simply made between God alone. Where God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit cuts the deal. Then we listen and we take note of what he says. So here the people are responding to God and they're making a covenant. They're making a commitment to God almost making a covenant, but stopping quite short of using that final word. Now, this isn't just about the keenies. You know, there's always a few keenies in the room, the spiritual giants who seem to have that kind of holiness glow as they move around. 
This was for everyone, the whole community, for the young, the old, the rich and the poor, the, 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 the male, the female, whoever. Everybody was included, and it included families that had been around the community for generations. In fact, there are people here in this church, and you've been here since the time of Noah. You remember the floods, and you remember what it was like there and then, and you've been part of this church ever since. And your names are on plaques, and your names are on history boards, and on the uh, cradle rollers up on the wall right now. You know you've got history here, and that's wonderful. And Nehemiah had families like Sariah, Jeremiah, Amariah, and other ones. They had been part of this community for years, generations. But there are other names in this list where actually they don't get any other mention in the Bible. This is the only time they've popped up. Maybe they're newcomers. They're people that have only recently surfaced and connected in some way. And maybe that's you too. Maybe you've only just got involved, connected with Chester Road Baptist. Maybe it's because actually you've connected with us through this online season. You've never been to the building. You've never even been to Birmingham, but somehow you've connected with us. Well, we're really glad that that's you. If you are in the Birmingham area, as we open up on the 25th of July, come in, check us out, get involved too. What we discover is that we're all in this together. In fact, Nehemiah, Ezra, they mention 83 names in all of people, each representing a different household or a different family. These aren't just a bunch of people. They're not just a random bunch of faces. Each of these 83 people is an individual with history, with character, with gifts, qualities, skills, likes, dislikes. Each one uniquely, beautifully made in the image of God. Isn't that like us here? In this growing community of this church here at Chester Road. Such a mix of people, not just a sea of faces, but every unique individual. And you know, as a leadership team, we've been praying on each seat, each seat in this place. We've got 200 seats now, capacity. And we're praying that each seat represents a different person with personality and character. That's you. By the way, when you come back on the 25th of July, here's the challenge. You're going to have to sit on one seat on that particular Sunday. Doesn't matter where it is, sit on it, enjoy it. But when you come back the next week, sit on a different seat. And when you come back the following week, go and sit on another seat. Do you know, if you make a commitment to sit on a different seat each time, it's going to take you three years of consistent weekly attendance to get round every single seat. And as we all do that, we'll get to know each other and we'll make sure that we connect well across the community. Let's make that happen. Pick your seat wisely. When you hang out with God, you realize that he hangs out with all sorts. You see, when you, if you are following Jesus, he is on the move. Don't think that faith is static. Faith is not static. God is on the move. When you follow Jesus, Jesus is on the move all the time. If you want to keep up with following Jesus, you've got to keep moving with him. And you're going to have to hang out with the people that Jesus hangs out with. And sometimes they look like you, but more often than not, they don't. That's the great thing about being part of a community. In verse 28, Ezra found that people had separated themselves from their neighbors and their colleagues. And they'd done so in the belief that that was a good thing, that that was what God wanted. Have you ever noticed that some people come to faith and they're so excited by coming to faith that they've, and they've got God, that they somehow, in getting God, uh, lose all their friendships along the way. For sure, to be holy is to be separate. That's what the word means, holy, to be separate. But actually, it's not so much about being separated from others. It's about being separated to God. The positive, not the negative. So if you want to follow Christ, keep with him and going where he goes. Be separate to God. Connect yourself, commit yourself to him. 
Verse 30, we promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the peoples around us or take their daughters for our sons. And you can skim through this passage and at first you think, is it really saying that somehow that people shouldn't intermarry, there shouldn't be any connection with others from different ethnicities or different areas? That's exactly what this scripture is not saying. After all, God was really abundantly clear about blessing Boaz, the wealthy businessman, in his relationship with uh, Ruth, the Moabites, economic migrant. God blesses relationships, blesses families, and all their mix and all their shape and all their configurations, wonderfully so. Here, what it's saying is this. Don't see your daughters as an opportunity to, for exploitation. Don't use your family as a way of promoting your own business needs. Doesn't that sound reasonable? Doesn't that sound a really sensible law to put in place? He wasn't saying, don't mix, don't connect with others, don't marry people from different ethnicities. He was saying, don't use your family, don't particularly use young girls for their exploitation, simply for your own ends. It makes sense. Respect them. Verse 31 it then becomes about finding God's rhythm in your life. We've had the most crazy 16 months in lockdown. Before that, we were all busy, 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 work, work, busy, busy all the time. Suddenly, lockdown kicked in instantly like that, and we're all suddenly realizing we've got to operate to a different rhythm. We're on pause, and we found that the world did not stop spinning. Do you know, in, this, in the UK, we've got a reputation for working some of the longest hours in Europe, but we're also one of the least productive nations in Europe. Simply putting in the hours alone doesn't lead to the productivity. It's as much about learning to be as to do. And we learned something of that during lockdown. Let's not lose that as we get back out of lockdown, keeping on. So the people are reminded it's not just about work, work, work. They were that reminded that every week was to include Sabbath, rest, a gift to enjoy, to celebrate, to feast, to go for a walk, to go and do something different, time out. But every year was to include a bunch of festivals as well, holy days, hence holidays, where it comes from. And then every seven years to let the land itself rest too. We've got so used to having cheap food that we put so much pressure on farmers to ex extract more and more nutrients from the ground to get our cheap food. There's gonna come a point where actually the ground is no longer sustainable. The land needs rest. And God puts in a rhythm, a healthy rhythm. What's the rhythm that works for you? How does God's rhythm bring you life at the moment? Are you connecting into that rhythm or are you somehow at variance with it? The chapter ends 34 and 30, uh, to 39 with a reminder about giving. And the giving there is not a law. It's not saying you must. It's simply that they respond to God out of gratitude. They respond with giving because they have received so generously from God. So they respond in that way too. So the question then is to you. How are you responding to God at the moment? As you're reading the scriptures, either in Nehemiah or other parts of the Bible, what are you hearing? What's, how are you being nudged by the Holy Spirit to respond to him? How are you changed by it? What's God putting on your heart at the moment for you? And whatever it is, just do it. Make a pledge to live the life that God has called you to, to be separate to him, to be holy to him and holy for him. Let's take a moment to pray. And we'll open ourselves to the Father God and see what he has to say to us. Let's respond in prayer. God, we thank you that you love us as you find us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you don't leave us as you find us. Your grace reaches out. It melts our stubbornness. 
it breaks up our hard heart. And we find ourselves in your presence wanting to be more and more like you. Lord, have your way. Have your way in our lives. We open ourselves to you again. Spirit of Christ, search our hearts. We pledge to follow you, to be separate to you, holy unto you because of your goodness. Lead us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing us to come back into your house of worship. 
Thank you for enabling us to worship you again in Chester Road Baptist Church. Today we pray. We pray for our government. We pray that the 19th of July will go smoothly for England and Scotland and Wales as a country. We pray that you will give wisdom to our Prime Minister and his ministers, that they will do the right thing, that people will stay safe, and that we will start to move out of this lockdown. We pray tomorrow for all the sportsmen taking part in finals, be it Wimbledon, be it Euro 2021. We pray that you will encourage them they will know you as they are playing. We pray that the fans will be respectful, that there will be no violence or any trouble at any of these events. And we pray that you will protect all of those who are taking part. We pray for those in the church, especially those who are unwell at present. So we pray for Don and Joyce, for Helen, for Brian, Chris and Roger, for Liz, for Anne, for Anne, for Jasmine, for Joyce, for Jesse, for Sheila, for Eugene, for Mike, and we pray for Alan Cooper's family. And as we finish off these intercessional prayers, we will say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Well, that about wraps up our time together. We are so pleased you've been able to join with us today. If you've got questions and you want to find out more about us, do go to the About Us section on our website, chesterroadbaptist.org.uk, and you will see details about how to contact me, Karis, and other members of the team too. If you found this service helpful, why didn't you click share right now and so others can join in this service too? This is almost the last time I'm going to say this. If you want to join us on the virtual online uh, tea and coffee uh, in the Zoom, then jump over onto the Zoom lounge. But guess what? In just two Sundays time, the 25th of July, have I ever mentioned that before? On the 25th of July, we won't have to go to the Zoom lounge for tea and coffee. We'll be able to hang out in our new Crossroads Cafe as that begins to get itself ready too. Another good reason to gather back with us on the 25th of July. I cannot wait for us all to gather back and worship together. This week, may you know the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as you seek to live your life for him. Bless you.